Hello, good morning, dear students. Today, my topic of presentation is DSDM and Extreme Programming Models. DSDM is basically Dynamic Software Development Technique. We will cover uh, what we will cover in this presentation is basically in introduction, DSDM phases of DSDM, and summary summary of DSDM, Extreme Programming, good practices in XP and XP values. So, what is DSDM? DSDM is basically dynamic systems development technique. It is an agile software development methodology. Students, we have discussed in the last video or in the last class about the agile software development methodology. It basically, um, it is based on the incremental approach of development and is based and is also using, using automated tools for the purpose uh, for a, in their phases of development. It is an iterative incremental approach that is largely based on the rapid development methodology. The DSDM philosophy is based on the based on the socialist principle. 80% of an application is often delivered in 20% of the time. It has been observed that we do not uh, we do not give sufficient time we do not give sufficient time or you can say in you can say the proportionate time the proportionate time in a, in each of the every phases of the development so it has been derived from from the philosophy that 80 percent of of, of uh, application is often delivered in 20 percent of the time so for for eliminating this uh, this drawback dsd dsdm has been come to uh, has been come to elevate this problem so dsdm is an iterative code method which in with every iteration follows the 80 percent rule that simply enough work is needed for every increment to facilitate movement to the following increment means whenever you move from one increment to next increment you should uh, you should do the proper you should invest the proper time and effort while moving from one increment to the to the next increment okay now what are the dsdm principles dsdm is basically based on these principles like focus on the business need deliver on time these you can say these are the goals of the dsdm collaborate and co uh, cooperate and collaborate never compromise quality demonstrate control develop iteratively communicate communicate continuously build incrementally so these are the basic principles of the dsdm they are they are generally self explanatory you know okay, uh, every of the development must fulfill the requirements so it focus on the business need it should be delivered on time cooperate and collaborate also means cooperate you have to cooperate uh, with the with the client customer team as well as collaborate with our team members to incorporate their change requirements you should never compromise on the quality of the delivered software okay you should never compromise on the practices that you are being adopted to make the software of good quality then you have to demonstrate control means you have to demonstrate how the software is working properly or not you should develop in an iterative manner and you should not build as a whole after means taking the requirements in a in a phased manner or in an incremental approach then develop it take the feedback from the client then develop it communicate communicate continuously means you should you should always communicate with the client take the feedback from the client okay we will show in the in the phases of the detail step build incrementally and you have to build this in an incremental manner okay now what are the phases of dsdm okay so the basic phases of feasibility study business plans functional model iteration design and build iteration implementation we'll discuss each of the phases in detail in the in the in the subsequent slides process life cycle process life cycle because, uh, means what we have studied in the phase that, that has been described in the diagram first of all we do the feasibility study feasibility study involves the business that we will discuss in detail also the functional model iteration we will do on the basis of the agreed plan create functional prototype 
new first of all identify functional prototype agree on the plan create functional type review prototype then after that you have to build design and build attention you make to you make have to design the design the prototypes for for designing the prototypes you should identify design prototypes agree on the plan create design prototype review design prototype then finally you will implement that particular software uh, on uh, by using the coding and finally do the implement finally do the deployment on the client side think implement train a review business and you do the proper customization as per their business requirements user approval and guidelines and train users train basically end users okay suppose if the end user is non it savvy then definitely you have to provide some training to to ensure the to ensure the proper working of software then we have the detailed step feasibility study you all i hope you are we have discussed in the various previous videos also what is feasibility study feasibility study is concerned with whether you are able to implement implement that project or not whether in terms of the technical feasibility whether in terms of the financial feasibility whether in terms of the scope of an of a project means scope means complete requirements of a project whether you are able to fulfill that or not so first of all feasibility study is the investigation of scope of an approved project can this project meet the requirement feasibility study you should uh, you should think and answer these questions while doing the feasibility study can this project meet the required business need is this project suited for the use of dsdm what are the most important risk establish essential business necessities and constraints okay then coming to the business plan define define the plans of the feasibility study reduces business area definition so what are the business plans means according what the feasibility study you have done according to it you will refine that particular plan produces business area definition prioritize requirements development plan and and updated risk log then coming to leave non functional requirements for later theek okay. hai so uh, after that uh, refining the plans you will you the business plan will produce the entire scope of the business area definition what are the major requirements what are the prioritized requirements what is the development plan we are adopting to fulfill that how much how much incremental development we will do in the various increments and updated what are the various updated risk log as per the feasibility plan and the business plan okay leave non functional requirements for later for this uh, at this stage we will leave non functional requirement non functional requirements you know you know very well like the performance measure like the uh, you can say uh, uh, security compatibility these are the various issues you can consider in the non functional requirements functional model iteration utilize what is functional model iteration basically you have to identify the various functions as per the requirements or the what the various modules in the system utilize requirements to design begin four sub stages that is identify functional prototype you have to identify what is the uh you what are the various functions and according to you have you have to design the functional prototype prototype what is prototype prototype is basically partial working of the desired system then you have to schedule that particular development create functional prototype and review prototype review prototype you must check whether it is fulfilling that particular requirement segment or not begin user environment user involvement show prototype to the client okay so uh, whenever you design the prototype or whenever you identify the functional prototype you should show that particular prototype so that the client get well satisfied okay then after that you can begin your designing of the final prototype we begin testing models then you can start with your verification and validation criteria for that then coming to design and build iteration for example you have already identified the major functionalities of the major functional prototypes okay so after that you have to integrate components of various phases for this you have to do the four steps you have to design 
design prototype schedule that particular development as per the design prototype you have identified by the integration of the various models then you have to create design prototype review the design prototype design prototype review as per the requirements and as per the as per the feedback of the client then implementation in finally implementation in which the coding step is also to be done and and finally the system is delivered to end user basically basically there are uh, there are four sub stages user approval train users implement system on site review system four sub stages what are the various four sub stages are there basically user approval is required like the beta testing you have to train your users means we see means we are in the stage of deploying that particular software on the client side after after completing it implement system on site review that particular system whether it is working properly or not at the client side at their operating environment then if we if we conclude in a nutshell dsdm basically helps in eliminating time and budget as variable helps in in identifying the prioritize requirement it follows the incremental process user involvement is there end users and the client are basically involved to get familiar during the entire process of development and testing and prototyping is is also being supported here widely to get uh, to make the software of good quality now next we <clears throat> we do uh, next topic is extreme programming what is extreme programming can anyone know no basically extreme programming is an agile software development framework that aims to produce higher quality software and higher quality dekhi extreme programming is not a new extreme programming is just an enhancement of an agile software development it basically recommends the best standard practices that is to be adopted in the agile software development with an aim to produce higher quality software and higher quality of life for the and for the and for the higher quality of life for the development team so uh, so that uh, definitely it will improve the quality of life for the development how it improve we will say we will see here in the, in this uh, in this description xp is the most specific of the agile frameworks regarding appropriate engineering practice for software development okay so xp is not a new xp gives the recommendation of the best practices to be adopted xp is appropriate when dynamically changing whenever uh, basically uh, xp where it is used first of all dynamically changing software requirements risk caused by fixed time projects using new technology is small co-located extended development team the technology you are using allows for automated unit and functional test is allowed or not so whenever there is a uh, there is a requirement change frequently then you will recommend xp okay whenever the risk caused by fixed time projects using new technology whenever there is a project the project is easy but there is a risk of technology change so that in case you can use the xp when there is a small located co located team means the team should be in the same geographical location okay the technology you are using allows for automated unit and functional test okay the technology you are using it must be supported by this automated unit and functional testing okay? so what are the basically good practices to be adopted as suggested by xxp for the purpose of achieving good quality software is basically first of all is basically code review what is code review code review is just uh, reviewing the code by uh, different person other than the other than the writer of that particular code so it basically detects and corrects errors efficiently it suggests pair programming such as coding and review of written code carried out by a pair of programmers who switch their works between them every hour it has been suggested by xp standard ki you should always whenever you write the code suppose there is a programmer x and y they are writing the code so x and y should exchange every hour should share their code every hour 
so that the mistakes can be easily rectified even at the coding stage okay. that is the purpose of code review then coming to testing testing what do you mean by testing testing is basically process of executing the program with an intention of finding an error in the program so testing code helps to remove errors and improves its reliability reliability what is reliability it means less number of failures so it basically your uh, there is no such failure you can say uh, testing basically helps to remove errors so definitely when there is no error then software is of good quality xp suggests test driven development to continue in write and execute test cases okay so xp always suggests you should not wait for the testing at the last step you should always simultaneously do the testing at each and every phases whenever you write the code you should do the testing you should write the test cases and <coughs> test cases and uh, test cases and and accordingly do the testing testing simultaneously in this basically approach test cases are written every even before any code is written incremental development incremental development is very good because first customer feedback can be gained at every iteration simplicity means you should not develop that particular code key it is not easy to maintain then design is good quality design is important to develop a good quality software considering coupling and cohesion factor you should always have a good design for a good design you should have low coupling and high cohesion now coming to integration testing means you should do the xp suggests that you should not wait for the integration at the last step you should always develop the module in an incremental manner and try to integrate the modules modules from time to time and do the do the proper integration testing so that it so that the problem will not occur in will not occur in the last step of complete integration what are xp values values basically communication means how the quality of real life can be improved for the developer use simple designs and common metaphors talk continuously with your programmers and customers simplicity follow the simplicity in the code feedback from from the system side you can check it at the unit test from the customer doing the acceptance testing from the team estimate the time to implement new requirements then for courage you should have the passion for code for today not for tomorrow you should not make any pending task for coding doing for today refactor as appropriate change as per the requirement of the customer be willing to throw code if the code is not working very much properly be you should be willing will to throw code and develop from scratch that particular increment respect to your team members not to submit not working no, non working code it is always advisable whenever you go to the customer you should not go with the go with the non working code okay so this will conclude xp values the references i have taken this so this will conclude it